Hello, my name is David Ades. I'm a life coach, and the topic of today's video is meditation. Om. After this video, you shouldn't be left with any excuses as to why you wouldn't give meditation a try, why you wouldn't get back to it, be more consistent with it, why you wouldn't maybe find the type of meditation that works for you. That's the goal of this video to remove all of the excuses, so you still might choose not to meditate, but it will be a conscious choice whether you do or not. It won't be fogged by excuses. Let's get rid of the fog so we become free, responsible agents. I decide whether I'm going to meditate or not, not my inner critic, not the thoughts that I'm caught up with, not I want to decide. And what does that mean for me to decide? instead of my inner critic, instead of all of this? Well, that's what the journey to mental health is. That's what psychological liberation, self-development, self-actualization, discovering actually what I am uh, so that I might decide more often than, uh, than something else in me that kind of wants to speak. My inner critic wants me to do this, wants me to do that. You want me to do this. You want me to do that. And I might listen sometimes. I might even listen to my inner critic sometimes but then I will listen. I don't mean to speak in ideals, of course. So, meditation is practicing the art of living. Living is a continuous series of two states. One is waiting, and the other is taking action. And they go hand in hand. And this is exemplified somewhat, um, not preposterously, but like in a kind of silly way, in a pop culture way. This is exemplified by that stereotypical karate master teacher in movies or cartoons who knows how to catch a fly with his fingers or with chopsticks or just like this. And he's teaching a student who doesn't know how to do that, right? Reaches for the fly and it buzzes away. If you've ever tried to catch a fly, certainly it is a continuous series of these two states, waiting and taking action. The karate master in this stereotypical uh, example has a very strong instinct for waiting. When is it time to wait? He has a very strong instinct for taking action. When is it time to stop waiting? This is all of life. This is absolutely all of life. When is it time to wait? Meaning take in information. When is it time to observe? When is it time to chill? When is it time to rest? When is it time to enjoy is a form of waiting. Like be on a river and just like float down and you're not doing anything. You're kind of just waiting. And, and it's not for anything. Any kind of misunderstanding here about what I mean by the word waiting would be due to a, a lack of understanding of, of what waiting is, or in other words, how much existence is just waiting. Existence itself is like a waiting room. The question, what are we waiting for, is a false question. What are we waiting for? Right? And... and this is like, this comes down into every single action in my life. Like, what am I working for? What am I pursuing love for? What am I pursuing knowledge for? Am I waiting for something? Am I waiting to become something? Am I waiting to feel some type of way? What is, what am I doing all of this for? This is a false question. If you're asking what we're here for, you are missing the point. Meaning your instinct for waiting is uh, it's clogged up, it's too weak, it isn't agile enough, it isn't adaptive enough, because you're not really waiting for anything. You're simply waiting. And so enjoy your time while you're here. Try to enjoy this waiting period. Don't wait for a certain thing before you're going to live. Don't wait to feel a certain way before you take action. Don't wait for or do. Or do. 
choose to wait, but do choose it. But many people consider that we are waiting for the Messiah. We're waiting for God. We're waiting for, I'm waiting for my Amazon package to arrive. I'm waiting to understand something. I don't, I'm waiting to make more money. I'm waiting to, from the top to the bottom, I'm waiting for this. I'm waiting for this. Everybody's waiting for something, but who knows how to wait? Who, who can suffer uh, this eternal waiting period? The karate master. The instinct to wait, you know, the, the word patience in English comes from the Latin root pati, meaning suffering. So we, we, we must suffer this kind of waiting period, but then, which means our instinct for waiting, our ability to wait, our willingness to wait must be incredible, infinite, impossible. So it's a lifelong practice. The pursuit of enlightenment or the attainment and remaining there, right? To try to put words on it, it's difficult, but... Let's call it the pursuit of enlightenment. It's not like you're ever done while you're alive, right? I don't think you're done when you're dead either. There's no like goal here. Just to get better every day, maybe. Your instinct to wait, your ability, your willingness to wait must be so strong so that you know when it is appropriate to wait time to collect information, time to enjoy the waiting period, time to, this is a waiting time. I know it. I can feel it. I have the instinct for it. I'm able to suffer the strain of just waiting, or I'm able to enjoy the period of waiting, right? How many of us suffer to wait too much? I'm waiting for them to respond. I'm waiting for this to happen, and we can't take it. How, mu how many of us uh, can't enjoy waiting periods, I can't chill out. I can't go on a vacation and have fun. It's, it's an inability to wait. It's an unwillingness to wait. And then how do you adapt to waiting? By enjoying or by suffering? Okay, so the instinct for waiting becomes strong so that you know when it isn't time to wait anymore. It's time to come home from the vacation. It's time to get up and take action. It's time to react, respond to the information that I've been waiting for. And this is also what the karate master uh, knows. When to wait, how to wait. And the fly goes, and at some point, the instinct for waiting in the karate master uh, shifts. And then it is no longer time for waiting. It is time for precise action. Of course, both of these take practice. When is it time to wait? When is it time to act? I think for our entire lives, we're going to make mistakes. We're going to act too soon. We're going to act too late. We're going to wait too long. We're going to not wait long enough. But there's a Chinese proverb uh, that I really like that says, it's not a mistake if you learn from it. So uh, for the rest of our lives, we'll be making mistakes but if we learn from them, then it's just part of the journey. It's not like some mistake you have to hold on to or something like that. Maybe once you learn from it, you can let it go. Maybe that's the, that's the truth of the matter. I don't know. This video is about meditation, not about the truth of letting go or something like that. That's for the next video. So to sum all of this stuff up, meditation is the practice of waiting and taking action, practicing the instinct for waiting, practicing the instinct of now waiting is done. How long do I wait? How long can I wait? How long am I willing to wait? That's what meditation is going to push. And the other side of that exact coin, how long do I meditate? How well can I meditate? The other side of that exact coin is when am I done? When am I done today? When am I done? After 10 minutes, I'm done? Or after 15 minutes? Or after 5 minutes? The instinct for waiting gets practiced, meaning that the instinct for taking action gets practiced. And this is what you find as soon as you try to meditate. Take an example. You're feeling somewhat bored or frustrated or tired or something, and you want to meditate. As soon as you close your eyes, as soon as you make yourself still, you're going to be rather assailed, assaulted by all of the 
actions that you could take, so many thoughts, so many emotions. I should do this. What if they need me? What if they say something? What if I'm late? What if the, 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 so many flies? When in reality, there's, of course, only one fly that you must catch, and it's yourself. And sometimes we're so full of illusory complications. We think there are so many problems in life. We think that we are such a problem. We think that they are such a problem. We think that it's such a problem. So many perceived flies. But it's just us that we're waiting for. But... What I'm trying to get to here is you close your eyes to meditate, then you realize how many flies your psyche is already perceiving, but you're not noticing because you're not slowing down to check in. Then it's your job to let the flies buzz, thoughts, I should do this, I'm feeling like this, and the ones that are true will stay with you through the waiting. And the ones that are false, are meant to, will fall away, fly away, because you're waiting. You're waiting to see if this is your fly, or if it's some illusion that you're creating for yourself so it dissipates. Or it actually belongs to somebody else so you get clear on how you feel about something and then you don't have to worry about it anymore. You're asking yourself to sink into the reality of being a living creature with an internal world and an external world. And there's only one fly here, and it's you. That's what happens when you're meditating. You're waiting until you're the only fly that's left. And once you're the only fly that's left, you wait until you get close enough and you grab it. And that's the whole point of meditation. That's the whole physical act of meditation. You're saying, I'm the fly. It's time for me to grab myself, sit down, focus. See if I can grab the only fly that really exists, uh, you know, in some philosophical way. This is, the, this is an illusory reality, the veil of Maya, um, forms and false cities. And your mind is the only fly. So I hope that what I conveyed in this uh, video is that there's nothing to do in life other than wait and take action. In other words, there's nothing to do in reality other than adapt to reality, the reality of your inner world, the reality of your relationships, environments, your outer world. And adaptation requires that you wait, open your senses, and then take action. And how open do you leave your senses? How often do you do that? To what capacity? In what context? Well, that's the practice. When is it over and it's time to act? It's time to take action? Well, that's the practice. And meditation is going to help you practice adapting to reality because that's all that it is. Quiet down, open the senses, listen inwardly, listen outwardly. What's there? What's true? What's false? What does that mean? Where does it go? How does it feel? What do I do with that? This is the art of living. So then the only kind of reason to not make meditation a practice, for example, or make anything a practice that, that gets us close to reality. The only reason not to do it is because we don't want to live. We don't want to be in reality. We don't want to see what's going on in us. We don't want to see what's going on outside of us. We're afraid of the truth. It's more hopeless than it seems on the surface, or it's Something like this. We would rather, we would rather take a pseudo ignorance is bliss perspective of like do 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 do. I'm waiting for something. When meditation is like, no, you're waiting kind of for yourself to stop waiting, or you're waiting for yourself to get better at waiting. You're not waiting for something. In fact, you're not waiting. It's probably the issue is that you're not waiting enough. And because you don't wait enough, because your instinct for waiting, your ability and willingness to wait is not good enough, because of these things, neither is your instinct to act, to stop waiting good enough. And this is a relative comment. Good enough 
for what? Good enough for your well-being, good enough for your happiness, good enough for the for that type of staircase momentum. I'm getting happier, I'm pursuing more well-being. Your instinct for waiting and taking action needs to be good enough for these things. And meditation is a way that we practice that. So uh, I hope at this point, if you choose not to meditate, you will be the one choosing. As opposed to some excuse or so on and so forth. You might uh, journal about your experience meditating. You might let yourself figure out what it means uh, what meditation means for you, what it looks like for you, what type of meditation, if you need to move around while you're meditating. There's no like right way of doing this. It's a practice like life. Every day you practice being alive. There's nothing else. There's no final moment of performance unless we project that onto something, which we can't help but do. We can't help but feel sometimes like, oh, it's time to perform. But of course, it's just a another practice in a series of eternal practices until it's over. It's eternity. Like as long as you're alive, you, you, you know, you don't know that you're going to pass. You know it as an abstract thing, but you can't really conceive of it. And then it's over. So it's eternity and then it's finished. So you have to practice waiting because you exist in eternity as long as you're alive. Got a little weird at the end here, huh? Do, 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 do. For my next trick, I'll juggle. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope this video was useful for you. Um, if you're interested in giving life coaching a try, click the first link in the description below. Like this video. If you do like it, comment your thoughts down below. Subscribe to see more, and I will talk to you soon.